Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we are talking today about psychiatric and drugs that affect the central nervous system, and this is part one. The first class of drugs we're going to discuss are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or the SSRIs. These are some of the most broadly prescribed types of antidepressants, and they are also used for a variety of different other psychiatric disorders, including panic disorder, obsessive compulsive syndrome, social phobia, and PTSD. There are many, many different drugs in this category, including fluoxetine, which is Prozac, sertraline, which is Zoloft, paroxetine, which is Paxil, citalopram, which is Celexa, and escitalopram, which is Lexapro. These drugs increase the amount of serotonin in the synapse in the central nervous system. Side effects of SSRIs commonly include insomnia, agitation, headache, nausea, diarrhea, sexual dysfunction, and occasionally platelet, platelet dysfunction. These drugs can inhibit the hepatic cytochrome P450, especially fluoxetine, and they can lead to increased levels of some other drugs, including TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants, some neuroleptic agents, as we will discuss shortly, and some antiarrhythmics like metoprolol. These drugs are typically not lethal if taken in overdose, which makes them an advantage if given in large quantities to patients who may be suicidal. Other common antidepressants related to these drugs are drugs that inhibit the reuptake of other neurotransmitters, like dopamine or norepinephrine. A few examples include venlafaxine, which is Effexor, which has a lot less of the anticholinergic effect and less hypotension and bupropion, which is called Welbutrin or Zyban, which has less sexual dysfunction and hypotension and also is used commonly in smoking cessation. An important side effect we want to talk about is serotonin syndrome. This can occur when excess serotonin occurs in the patient's body. Symptoms of serotonin syndrome can be mild, like anxiety, restlessness, or insomnia, but can become very severe, including tremor, clonus, sweating, seizures, hyperthermia, muscle breakdown, even leading to death. It has been mistaken for malignant hyperthermia. Patients are at high risk for serotonin syndrome when SSRIs are given together with another serotonergic medication, such as methylene blue, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, carbamazepine, or linazolid. And I mostly want to highlight the methylene blue because we commonly give that drug as a dye or in cardiac surgeries when we're providing anesthesia. And because SSRIs are such commonly given drugs, there is risk for these two drugs to be given to patients. And there have been reported uh, injury and death due to serotonin syndrome in patients who get these drugs together. So we need to be very careful about this. The treatment for serotonin syndrome or before I get to that, there are other weak serotonin reuptake inhibitors, including fentanyl, niperidine, tramadol, and methadone. So there really are several drugs out there which, when given together, could lead to a patient developing serotonin syndrome. But we want to be especially careful in patients who are getting SSRIs and those who are getting methylene blue. The treatment for serotonin syndrome includes supportive therapy, sedation with benzodiazepines, cooling, and administration of serotonin receptor antagonists, including ciproheptadine. Take a moment to record any questions you might have, and then we'll continue with the next part of this session. Another category of psychiatric drugs are the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs. Examples of these drugs include phenylzine and others which you may not commonly be exposed to, and selegiline, which is used for Parkinson's disease. These are older drugs, not commonly used as often anymore, and very effective for depression and anxiety. The enzyme MAO, monoamine oxidase, metabolizes catecholamines, which are the monoamines, and these include dopamine, serotonin, epi, and norepi. MAO has two subtypes, actually. There's the MAO-A subtype, which is involved in metabolizing all the common catecholamines, 
serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and tyramine. And together with another enzyme called COMT, lead to met metabolic products, including vanilla mandelic acid, VMA, which we talked about in patients who have an overload of catecholamines due to pheochromocytoma. There's also a B subtype of the MAO enzyme, which is involved primarily just in metabolism of tyramine. Most MAO inhibitors are irreversible, non-selective inhibitors of the enzyme. We don't see these drugs used as often anymore because of their side effect profile and their more complex dosing. Side effects include orthostatic hypotension, anticholinergic syndromes and sedation, anticholinergic symptoms and sedation, as well as sexual dysfunction and weight gain. Most notably, patients who take MAOIs need to avoid tyramine in their diet. Tyramine is one of the amino acids. It's normally deaminated in the liver by the MAOA and the MAOB enzyme, but mostly MAOA. And a buildup of tyramine can lead to an indirect sympathomimetic response, sort of like a pheo. So these patients have to avoid foods with tyramine, including avocados, cheese, liver, fava beans, and Chianti wine. MAOB inhibitors like selegiline are usually safe to use uh, or rather, patients are usually safe to take tyramine when they're taking these drugs, unless they're taking very high doses. One big drawback of these drugs is that overdose can be lethal, leading to tachycardia, hyperthermia, and hypermetabolism, seizures, and coma, and people have actually treated this with dantrolene. Classically, we were always taught to stop MAO inhibitors for two to three weeks prior to administering anesthesia. However, there does not seem to be any data to support this practice. Rather, we should just use our sympathomimetics with caution, knowing that these patients may be extra sensitive to catecholamines and the catecholamines metabolism may be prolonged. We also may want to use direct acting rather than indirect acting agents and consider avoiding epinephrine in your local and regional anesthetics. MAOIs can interact with opioids, especially meperidine, leading to both excitatory and depressive reactions. The last group of drugs we're going to talk about in this recording are the TCAs, the tricyclic antidepressants. These include substances like amitriptyline, which is Elevil, and other tryptolines like nortriptyline and imipramine and clomipramine. These drugs block the reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin to some degree as well. We don't see them used very often for depression nowadays, although we do commonly see them used at lower doses for chronic pain syndromes. These drugs are strongly plasma bound and are metabolized in the liver, and their protein binding can be affected by other drugs like phenytoin and aspirin. Again, this, these were very effective antidepressants, but they came with poor side effect profiles. Again, anticholinergic side effects like dry mouth, tachycardia, urinary retention, and GI slowing, orthostatic hypotension, and prolongation of the PR interval and cardiac depression. Patients had sedation and a lowered seizure threshold, and these drugs have a narrow therapeutic index and are lethal in overdose, leading to myocardial depression and ventricular dysrhythmias. These drugs' most common reactions are related to their anticholinergic effects and their ability to block catecholamine uptake. So again, like the MAOI drugs, we want to be careful with our sympathomimetic drugs in patients who are taking TCAs. They may have an exaggerated pressure response, especially to indirect acting agents. Although sometimes patients who are chronic TCA users can have an attenuated response to pressors due to prolonged exposure to catecholamines. So we may see either kind of response. It's been noted that patients who are given atropine may have an increased likelihood of post-operative delirium. And there may be some potentiation of opioids and barbiturates. I just want to reinforce our point about methylene blue that we made before. Methylene blue is actually structurally related to TCAs. 
although its primary effect is that it inhibits monoamine oxidase. And that's why we want to avoid methylene blue in patients who are at risk for serotonin syndrome. We'll stop the recording here and pick up with the next one.